Okay, finally getting around to doing a review on this watch that I got about, oh, just over two weeks now, I guess. This is the NTH Nazario Saro. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and uh, this is from the micro brand NTH, which means, I think it stands for Not History. And they do a lot of uh, basically homage pieces, but they are perhaps... Uh, well, the pieces are not like as uh, cold cut, you know, derivatives or, um, uh, you know, such a direct copy essentially of an existing design. You know, you've seen many uh, uh, Rolex of Mariners and, and GMTs, you know, generally a lot of Rolexes that have been copied. And uh, they do their own mix of things and it's, it's all original basically and... Uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot to like about this, so I just wanted to give it a good two weeks to make sure I got a good feel for how it operates and how I'm enjoying it, or not, but I definitely am, so no worries there. So, um, I guess let's go into a brief history of this watch. Um, this, uh, the first version of this, which was just the Nazario, was started about, um, uh, I think last year, actually, right around last year. This is, as of this date, this is December 2018. So I believe it was about a year ago that the, uh, the first version came out. It was just called just the Nazario, not Nazario Saro. And that one is basically based off of a very rare and very expensive, uh, but also very significant Rolex motto, the Zero Graph, and um, why don't we go over here and take a look at uh, at uh, a few things. So, um, first off, I guess uh, let's start off with the Nazario. It's an Italian sub, the Nazario Saro, rather, the name for which this watch is based off of is um, the Nazario Saro, and it's a According to this, a um, submarine. Uh, it's important to naval history. Basically, in the 80s or the Cold War, it was a class of submarines that, that, that patrolled the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, I guess it's still around. There's a museum to this sub. And that's basically what it's named after, which is pretty cool. There's more pics of it. Um, I guess this is in dry dock and some of the things here but let me back out of here that what I wanted to see this you know just some pics of this sub and um, but the design of this watch which started with the Nazario is actually based off the Rolex zero graph and well let me just show you if picture of the let's see where is it move this down okay so this one right here this was the first um sorry this was the first version black dial california dial still cathedral like hands this says nazario and uh got these markings here and uh, yeah and let's see there's other pictures of it and there's an angle and here's probably a better rendition of what actually really the uh, dial looks like it's very um it's actually very textured it's got like this diamond pattern in it um i guess you, that's what you could call it so um you can see there's actually kind of a faux patina that's in the numbers as well as the hands but uh, this loom bezel where you see white is also uh, loomed, but it's white uh, instead. Um, still a handsome watch. Uh, let's see if there's any more shots of this. Right there, and up here, another angle. And that's mine right there, which is the second version. And I guess that's basically it for this first version, and that's all been long since sold out. Um, I, I wanted to jump on this after the fact, 
way after the fact and it was gone so I was kind of bummed you couldn't this never returned um, but I am not so happy because this newer version that's in white with dial now uh, popped up very recently towards the end of uh, 2018 and it's an exclusive to watch gauge as was the first one and um, it is basically has just sold out not that long ago so uh, whether they'll make some more it's anyone's guess but uh, probably they say it'd probably be a good while if they decide to do so so for all intents and purposes this is basically a done deal for now <laughs> um, until uh, maybe they feel that you know they might want to bring it back which um, would be nice to people to, to uh, able to experience this watch <laughs> funny this is my picture right here Yeah, put this on a new strap. It should be mine. Instant sock. <laughs> we took my picture. This is my strap. And I, I took this on the dash of my car. I know what's mine. I have the pictures on my phone. But whatever. Um, and so let's go back to the Rolex model. You can see how the design really matches what they have. In terms of like uh, this steel bezel, um, this is more concave, which is pretty cool. But it's uh, which is good though that this doesn't copy exactly the same thing as this. But it takes a lot of the cues, such as the uh, uh, stainless steel bezel, the red uh, markings on them at the twelve, six, nine, and three, and the California dial, and that railroad track around the outside. And uh, at least with the the uh, black version, it uh, let's see here. I think it didn't have gold hands like that did, which is fine. Um, but it does match, seem to match the kind of faux patina in there. Uh, obviously, they didn't have loom on the outside. And uh, let's see if there's any more pictures. It's a movement. So to talk about um, this. Rolex real quickly, why it's so holy grail. It's very few made. I think there were only eight, or is it only twelve were made? Eight have ever surfaced. So maybe four is too flown out there. And they can fetch over a million dollars at auction. So this is quite rare. Um and what's significant about this is you can you can look this up and read it yourself, but essentially this is Rolex's first uh watch with a rotating bezel so that's kind of important for the dive watch which is that a uh, Rolex will make moving forward and that will affect obviously the Submariner, Submariner line and the other thing too is that this is also has a first in-house movement that has a chronograph movement a primitive one or rudimentary one at, at that but uh, still um, being a first chronograph that uh, Rolex made uh, that's obviously going to be very related to the Daytona line. And so, um, I know this is far from that, but, you know, it all stems from one source and, you know, and it goes to uh, other models that we now know and, and well, some of us can enjoy. And how this one works real quickly is why it's called the zero graph, I believe, is that pusher up here. And obviously, this is a regular crown that you can use to uh, set the time, wind, Actually, I'm not sure if it has hand winding. I would think so. I think it is a manual wind, isn't it? Yeah, there's no uh, there's no rotor. And what this button does is, um, once you push it and hold it down, it'll zero the second hand that's usually running up to the top. And then when you're ready, let it go. And then it'll start your timing. And, um, yeah, you can't really stop it, per se. Like on the mark as I understand it uh, if you do push it again it'll just automatically zero back to the top that's the zero graph and so you can do multiple timings real quick it's almost like a flyback um, during the graph but that's all it does is just reset this actually hold it back and when you let it go it's when you tell it to start running and you can time basically up to an uh, one minute you know very basic 
but that's how that works. And um, but all these are very significant to at least. I mean, I, pretty much everything in Rolex is pretty significant and important. But definitely the Submariner because of this this feature, which would be in all their dive models to be, and the fact that it has the first in-house caliber that has a chronograph movement, which will go to obviously help uh, the the uh, very famous Daytona line. And um, this watch is actually not as big as you might think it is. It's actually quite small. I don't know if I can find the the size on this one, but I believe it's less than 30 millimeters, uh, which is quite small for a um, quite small for a, uh, a chronograph. If you think about it, um, so it's pretty amazing that they can fit this all in here. And so anyways, um, my version, the Nazario Sorrow, is kind of draws from basically the Rolex, uh, this black version, the way the California dial layout, um, but it also takes from, this is, a, a, I believe, another version of the watch. This is a white dial, and obviously it's a very different dial, uh, more traditional, and it has a... Uh, I guess a tachymeter on the inside too and this could be very significant also for obviously for the Daytona even more so because now you got a tachymeter built in to the watch with a chronograph function so very cool so basically my white word version takes this colorway it takes the design of this look but takes the colorways basically of this white version uh, with a white dial and the blue hands and the gold second hand and of course the the bezel is the same you know with the red accents on those parts and I guess that's basically it so let me pause this and switch back to the other view let's just get a better look at the actual watch so that was a uh, semi-brief history of, of the watch that inspired this design which is the Rolex Xerograph and where the name came from which is basically an Italian submarine during the Cold War so these two factors are pretty cool that come into play for this particular design from NTH and so um, I again I was bummed that I couldn't get the black version originally it looked nice with the patina and the black dial and everything but in ret retrospect I do. I am glad I got this, and I think it's a better watch. Uh, I think it's better executed, a little bit more clean, a little bit more consistent. I say, oh, sorry. I say um, that the uh, the black version has that texture dial, which is interesting, but it does add some busyness to everything. This, I don't know if you can I can show it here. It does have. A texture to it like a sandstone or kind of a slight grain to it which is nice uh, so it's not completely flat and but the black version had the patina in it but the bezel was basically like this white um, not super jarring but when I think about it it's like well if you're gonna do loom on the outside you might as well I mean on uh, patina on the inside and you have loom on the outside it should probably match it shouldn't this looks new like bright white whereas the um, inside is looks more aged because of that patina uh, loom that they applied uh, on the black version so this I found in retrospect there's a bit of a discord in that concept but um, it's still a good looking watch um, I mean you could also just assume that okay take this as not necessarily being loomed uh, you know it's just a white uh, painted uh, bezel um, but it happens to loom <laughs> um, but um, that's all good um, I'm quite happy with this purchase um, it's from Watchgate again it's an exclusive and uh, it's not numbered pretty simple back clean but it works and uh, I'm not even sure clear how much they actually totally made of these but 
let me just go over the dimensions. It's a 40 millimeter case. I think it's about a 47 or 48 millimeter lug to lug. Uh, a really important note is that the thinness is just 11.5, which is great. And uh, it's got drilled lug holes, solid end links, solid links, and they're all individually made. It's not usually these. The center link and the uh, side pieces are usually kind of connected, and and they might have started off solid. I mean, separate pieces, but a lot of other places that make a oyster bracelet, they basically are fused together and they move as one. Whereas this, they're all separate here. So that's you'll see a lot of people in other reviews and they talk about is how well this can just fold down, it can accordion or just collapse on itself, and that lends to look how great this pulls in here and um, I like I like the oyster bracelet it's super classic um, it's not terribly exciting but I don't care it's it works it's a it's a good well-established um, link metal link bracelet design and I do like the way these lugs are um, for me the way I take it it's kind of at least the first time I ever noticed something like this it's, it's kind of very Rolex Rolex X S uh, the, you know the older vintage models such as what might have been on this old uh, oyster case is would have been not as uh, 3D as this this is almost like if you're familiar with Strapco they have their super 3D um, uh, bracelets that and that usually refers to this fitted part to probably some Seiko often an SKX and this it's just, it's like it's stepped, you know. This one isn't as much as the strap code one, but, or even some of the, maybe some of the more modern Rolex, this part kind of just sticks up, has a, you know, extra thickness to it. And, uh, I don't know, I like it, it's very dimensional. Um, and this watch, watch was uh, very good. Um, what else can I say about it? It's a solid clasp, it really locks in good, and but this is real easy to deploy. Solid uh, uh, clasp here, at least this, this folding component. And I'm not sure if, can, you know, I don't know how people can define if this is solid or just folded. It probably is solid, that's why it's, they're able to mill it. Yeah, look how thick that is. You know, if it was a stamp piece, it wouldn't be quite like that. And so, there's that, and so I've got the focus, and hopefully you can see the hands are gold, well, the second hand is gold, and the hour and minute hand is blue, and let me see if I can bump up the brightness, maybe you can catch it a little bit better, okay, you're starting to see it more, right, there. Yeah. Got the edge there, right there. That's a nice touch. It's a nice accent color. So it could have been very monochromatic, but I like how they took the color scheme from the white version of the Zero Graph and applied it to this. And they didn't just use Mercedes hands, which is good. I think I I do like these cathedral hands. They go right up to the minute track, which is nice for this one. Uh, they're very distinctive, so you're not going to get them mixed up. California Dodge really done. Even though what's printed on this, it looks got like a good heavy application of black. Heavy enough where it looks almost 3D. You see like a kind of a beveled edge around the numbers and the shapes here. So that's cool. Um, it's using BGW9. Um, so it glows blue, which is awesome. I, this, I really like that color over you know your standard green, which is will grow glow stronger, but um, the BGW9 formulas these days go glow pretty darn good. So, um, and this is this full loom dial. So I'll show you a loom shot later. Uh, even the loom is in the crown. Uh, screw down. It's got perfect. It's not too small, not too big, and uh, it unscrews and screws down with confidence and security and it's, it's a good one it's got just a good amount of grip too the way it's 
this uh, texture, this, this coinage is. And the bezel is one of the best I've had. You can hear that. But no play. I don't know, somebody, I think Pat from uh, Take Time, uh, he reviewed a, a different, the Urban Gentry one, the Catalina. Uh, basically the case is the same, almost everything, but you know, the execution of the, of the bezel insert and the dial and hands, all that is, it's been redone a little bit differently, but essentially the rest of it's the same, same movement. But he said that the bezel, he felt it was spongy I do not get that because, at least in my version, it's rock solid, clicks nicely, no play. And it lines up just right. right there. And yeah, it's almost basically, at least for my experience, like Christopher Ward, the Trident series. I've had a bronze. Um, and that one clicked really nicely. I thought I had a different one too. Well, that one didn't have a rotating bezel. But uh, from what I've experienced and what I've seen other people experience with the Trident line from Christopher Ward, it has a very solid feeling bezel clicks like similar to this, and which is a good thing. Um, although sometimes I like the real kind of a ones that feel kind of oil dampened or something. It's got a little kind of touch and go resistance um it's still very smooth but you have that nice click it's like some of those i consider like cracking a safe the way it sounds and feels like uh very smooth um those are nice too but i always enjoy i can as long as it's not sloppy you know and sounds kind of teeny um uh, that's all that's good enough bezel for me uh, it's running on a Miyota 9015 automatic movement and uh, it's great it's got hand winding I think you know uh, the power reserve is probably the same as like a Seiko, basic Seiko movement like the 7S26 or the NH35 36 or the 4R 35 or 36s which is 38 40 hour ish uh, which is plenty and uh, but it's a very reliable uh, movement. Um, this example is really good. I'm really happily surprised that this has been basically getting between plus one, more so plus two seconds per day. But there has been times where I noticed that it has barely moved plus one, and that's awesome uh, for a watch like this. Again, drill lock holes makes changing straps easy, as this thing is a strap monster. And I'll do a wrist shot. <clears throat> I like white dial <coughs> divers. My Seiko model, one of them, was a, a white dial diver that I made from the SKX, and which was my own uh, homage and I guess also my own custom watch. Uh, based off of another white dial diver, which was from a Tag Heuer that I had, oh, for about 12 years, but I lost. Um, really nice. Uh, but anyways, uh, here it is on my 6.875 inch wrist. It's, yeah, it sits between and it was six and three quarters and seven inches, depending when <laughs> in the environment. Uh, you got nice beveled edges. I like the fact that most of this, practically everything, is brushed, which is a finish I prefer, especially in a tool watch. Only the edges, like the bevel edges, um, and maybe, you see, not even the sides here, just uh, accents on just some of the beveling, and it's just enough just to highlight that, which is it's fine. I don't mind that being more high polished, but the rest are like a satin brush finish. Uh, <laughs> Just goes with anything and uh yeah this is how it looks like on my wrist let me try to take this back a little bit as far as i can get use some perspective let's move this before i swipe it off my desk onto the floor and see this is very low profile if you hear some pattering that's my dog in the background 
and the legs curve down good and it's comfortable they give you uh, you can see like some half links or if you even consider that half link but it's not like the, this one up here full and you got plenty of adjustability in the micro um, adjustments I wish it did have a glide lock system but to be honest I've gone with just this type of style all my life for the most part and it works I don't my wrist really expands that much or shrinks that much where it's I can't you know it's oh it's super uncomfortable it's too loose or it's too tight I always find a perfect spot that accommodates it pretty much every time um, uh, but it would be nice if it had that just a just a convenience in being able to adjust uh, without tools if it had that kind of glide lock feature or, that you see on Rolexes and some certain Christopher Wards have something similar but anyways uh, so it looks this nice low profile uh, it's feels solid enough but not never really burdensomely heavy and and top heavy as it's, it's just well balanced and it's a good looker uh, so let's do a gloom shot. Let me pause this. Hopefully the color balance on this is cor correct. So it'll look as it should. And let's get the sides. This is a crappy light. I should have gotten my other torch from downstairs. And I'm going to need to bump this up. Like, yeah. you know what? Let me try one more thing. So here's a loom shot. Let me take it off my wrist. Easier. Excuse me. Turn away if you get blinded. There we go. And. This is one thing that I really like about this, is the loom shot. Crown glows, but most importantly, the bezel and the dial itself. Nice. Very nice. And I'm glad that the dial isn't as bright as the hands and outside it's just slightly I guess dimmer or slightly different shade perhaps from the hands it just gives it a little bit of differentiation and just, uh, yeah I think it just every all together reads really well and uh, can't complain you know and Again, my camera is only so sensitive, so um, it's probably even more so in person. Did you see this glow? It's probably not as blue as this. I don't know if I can s imagine it. It's just a tint of green in it. There's rarely any loom that truly glows probably as blue as you're seeing it here. There's usually a little bit of green in something. Only thing that does match something remotely like this is tritium tubes. Uh, they'll have a nice, cool, very cool blue, a truly cool blue. There's like no hints of green in it at all. Uh, and that and those types of uh, uh, loom that have tritium tubes or the flat ones, which aren't exactly tubes. But um, anyways. Um, yeah, I have yet to test this through the night, but I have little doubt that it will pretty much make it through just fine. Um, for the most part, probably till morning, with a decent charge, and with your eyes adjusted to the to the you know night, um, you'll probably read it just fine, just like any other watches I've owned, like from. Seiko and Christopher Ward and some other ones that have some more than decent loom. This one should be no no real difference. 
uh, most people seem to uh, be very satisfied with NTH's loom, and I tend to agree. So let's turn back on the lights and conclude this. Okay, in conclusion, so I just want to wipe this down real quick. Um, yeah, this has been a really nice watch for the money. It's about six fifty. Um, yeah, you get a really quality build. The movement is reliable as hell. I don't care what people say about the, oh, it's just got a Miyota movement. It shouldn't cost that much. Dude, it's solid. It's proven. And it's been my experience that Miyota, uh, Seiko, uh, Swissetta, um, i trying to think of some others, but those are the main ones. They're all basically very comparable and the same in terms of performance. Um, I'd argue, in fact, in many cases, this has been equally, if not more accurate than most of my Swiss watches that I've ever owned. Um, uh, yeah, at very least on par, uh, if not slightly better. Um, so yeah, this is nothing to snuff at. You're paying a lot, I think, for a good design, a good build, thoughtful one. Uh, nice finishing, construction, um, good loom application, and, you know, it's inspired, but it's still a very original design, just the way it's executed and all the combination of things. Um, yeah, I mean, if they still make these later down the line, because I know for a fact that I believe now that they're completely sold out, uh, I suggest you get one, unless someone decides they want to sell theirs on the second-hand market, but I don't see why they would. This is really nice. I really like the profile and just everything. The size is perfect at 40 by 11.5 um, thick, and it's a flat. It's actually a very, ever so slightly, I think, domed crystal. It's, if, it, if it is, yeah, it doesn't feel completely flat. I feel a slight elevation in the center like you know kind of curvature like but it's very subtle but it's good and um oh did i did mention that these are 20 millimeter lugs which is great because a lot of watches that uh that i have now um and i have a lot of uh, strap options will work on this and um uh, and this again this looks great on a nato or any two-piece and I definitely like it on this really nice bracelet that it comes with. Um, I would highly recommend this and any other probably watch that has this uh, from NTH. At least for the ones that have this basic case style, which is under their Nakin line, I believe. Um, I really like the new Nakin Renegade that just came out. Um, it's kind of Tudor style with the snowflake hands and some other things, but that dial, it's got this texture, like fume dial almost. It's kind of, it darkens around the edge and it's got this really unique blue, almost, I feel there's a little bit of gray in it too. And it's like, it's kind of got this brush finish down it. It's really nice, but I debate whether um, I'd like to own it, but then I debate whether... Um, I'd want to um, own more than one of the basic, you know, case style. Um, there's enough differences in the bezel and the dial and the hands are all different that it does look like a different watch. And it, it just, you know, besides that, it's just a good uh, case design. Just the, I like the drill lug holes and the slimness of it the brush finishing and everything it's a uh, you know there's a lot going for it even though you know it's the same basically uh, but it's just a different look uh, so tempting so tempting um, I don't think that's a limited edition but I don't know they may once they stop making it that, that might be it because I haven't seen any of their previous napkin models as far as I'm aware of pop back up I could be wrong maybe they have brought back some but um, you know that's I feel that a lot of these are very limited run so if you can get them uh, the only other NTH I like I mean they're all good actually but 
that I have my eye on is the Devil Ray. Um, that's pretty cool, especially with the turquoise dial and that kind of rainbowish uh, outer track. I think it's for timing your ascent for breathing uh, so you don't get the bends or something like that. Uh, that one's really nice. Uh, it's a bit larger, uh, kind of Doxa, you know, retro dive kind of style, but it looks good and they did a lot of really nice original execution on that on that one as well. But uh, I don't know. I I think they all range around six fifty two, which is a, it's a good price for like a you know a high quality micro brand. Um, it's got a fairly you know aesthetically pe pleasing and original uh, design. Um, you can really see the blue hands now. Um, yeah, I um, I don't know. Maybe the next time you see me, I might have the other one. I don't know. There's a couple of things on my list <laughs> that I'd really like to get. Uh, I may not be able to get all the ND NTHs that I want. But um, at least I have this one. And this one will last a good while. Looks great. And um, thanks for watching. Um, I hope I didn't bore you or go off topic too much. But uh, I think everything's relevant. If you need more, I don't know technical specs or the unboxing to see what it comes with which this one doesn't come with much it just comes in a black case um and some other things oh, they do give you extra links too on top of what's on here so if you need to go beyond the standard they actually they actually give you a couple a few extra i think four two or four uh at least extra links so you can get that over a particularly larger wristed person um yeah, I think that's the only thing I would I would note uh, outside of this watch itself is the case is like a black pleather with an NTH branding, and uh, yeah, it's not much. It didn't come with an extra strap that, that some of their watches I think do. Maybe if you get them on a pre-order, or for some reason have a deal like the Catalina. I think the company they were working with supplied some straps to give away with some of those. Uh, but that's all right. I've got tons of straps and uh, you guys will be seeing this on the Facebook groups Maybe I might post some videos on it, but most likely it'll just be on Facebook uh, Facebook to watch groups um, and uh, I do want to put it on Instagram, but I am holding off on it for a particular reason uh, and I, I do snups as well, so check me out there as well uh, Thanks for watching it's getting too long uh, I'm out.